Thanks for coming tonight, today. And uh, so just to remind everybody, we have a workshop from 2 to 2.45, or maybe a little longer if we, if we don't have a whole lot. Then we will start again at 3 o'clock with the regular meeting. And we don't have anybody behind us, do we? Okay. So we won't try to go extremely long, but at least we know we have a little bit of time. Okay, so I guess what I'll do is I will open the meeting to comments and then we'll go over the uh, workshop agenda really quick. So I guess if we can post the phone number again. And so again, the number is 702-589-9629 for anybody that would like to call in and discuss the agenda items for the workshop. We will then have the comments again for the regular meeting at three o'clock for, for those agenda items. See, Josh, do you know, do we have, do we have any written comments or anybody come, any comments beforehand? Okay, okay. Okay, I think we've given enough time for anybody that would like to call in to call in. So let's go ahead and um, go over the agenda really quick. So for this one, we only have two, two um, agenda items, but I guess it's a matter of how we interact with these. So we have the ongoing capital improvement plan um, so I don't know how, who all had a chance to read it, but as stated in the draft report, one of the things that uh, would be like to be discussed today is a some type of draft plan or something to show how the capital projects could be could be completed and how we're going to flow through the next several years. Um, what's going to be done? What's going to be something like that? So, did you get a chance to see see that, uh, Dennis? The comment on a yeah. yeah. Um, is that something that can be done? I think what you're, and I wanted to just clarify after reading this, it sounds like what the, the committee is really asking for is how are we actually going to get this work done and how are we going to get it done. And then the sequence, sequencing that we've stated. And yes, we could provide a report on that. In fairness, at this point, it's just Greg and me because the committee hasn't discussed the report yet. So. The reason I bring that up is because whether I think we could lead into it with the ongoing projects and the ongoing projects are a lot of the reasons that we don't understand and it's hard to to vote on the five year plan when we're still trying to understand what's happening currently. So with that in mind, um, just might help as we go through the projects. Um, so I guess does and does anybody else have anything to state before we go through the, okay, go ahead. He had some comments about some events that took place today because again, you know, we have a sort of understanding that certain things are gonna happen and they didn't happen. So the idea was we're gonna present, you know, on July, on uh, January 12th, our reports to the council. And, you know, the mayor gave me his word that Mr. Mays, that, that was gonna be on and it was on the draft agenda. Then when the agenda came out, I think yesterday, we were off it. And this, again, for my money, creates an issue of trust. You know, and we have an understanding that certain things are gonna happen and they don't happen. And I wanna be careful with trust. I wanna quote from an email that I sent to Dennis earlier this morning. I said, I'm not in the business of insulting people, so let me explain myself. When I talk about trustworthiness, it has three components, competence, honesty, and reliability. By reliability, I mean that when we have an agreement, staff will abide by it. In that specific sense, you are not reliable and therefore not trustworthy. The UAC needs to have confidence that when we are told that specific things will be done, they are done. 
I'm just speaking for myself, of course. The six other UAC members, for all I know, may have full confidence and trust in you. This has happened again and again. And for example, the CIP report not being, I would say, removed from the packet. It was there, and then it wasn't there. And you know, the mistakes always err in favor of sort of suppressing things that we want to say. I wouldn't mind if it went both ways. We all make mistakes. I've made lots of mistakes. I'm a scientist. I've published things that were wrong. You know, I do my best. But we're seeing on full display in the Capitol in Washington, DC, what happens. It's the statement I made last time. Government cannot function without trust. And we need to have trust, even on this very much smaller scale here, that when we agree that things will be done, that they're done. Otherwise, this committee cannot function. That's just my comment. Is there anything related to the agenda item? Well, yes. I mean, it would have been a problem if the CIP, our CIP report had not been in this agenda packet. It wasn't in the agenda packet that was forwarded to us. I don't know if you noticed that. No, the CIP wasn't in the last comment. The, the ongoing is, on, is in there. So the first agenda item is the ongoing packet. But my point is the report that Greg and I wrote yes, was not in the packet. It wasn't in, the, in that reversion, revision, but it was put in. It look, I believe it looked like it was an oversight. Additional information was added, and evidently it was dropped off, but it was put back on. So we need to be careful of that, but I believe it was just an oversight. It wasn't, I don't believe it was intentional. So I didn't say it was intentional. I said people have to be reliable. When they say they're going to do something, they have to do it. I'm not judging people's motives. Well, it was, in the original, it was in the original packet. I know it was in the original, but presumably the latest version is the one that matters. Right, so the second, the second or third version, because there's been a few. No, it was the second, second version. Okay, the second version didn't have it, the third version does. So it is in the Yeah, this that's packet. because I pointed it out. Okay, and we appreciate that. That's, that's so, and it was corrected. It wasn't, they did not ignore you, they, they corrected it. So right now we have two items to go on today. Yeah, and we Dennis have, also said he was going to get us see if we can get back on the agenda for January 12th. And I don't know if anything happened with that. And the answer, uh, I don't know what has to do with this, this item, but uh, the answer was no, we couldn't because the agenda was already posted. OK, well, that's unfortunate because we had an agreement that it was going to be on the January 12th. I realize it's, it's a workshop, and maybe it's not appropriate to discuss you know, when people don't do what they're going to say. But that's just my comment. I, don't wanna, I know we have time limits. I've, said my, I've made my points. I think we can probably talk about that at the uh, when we talk about the report. We can we can bring that up, but right now it's really not part of the agenda item. You're correct. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any comments on the ongoing before we start? Just to make a comment real fast, you'll see some the changes in yellow. As you know, you'd already actually seen this as of 11:30, um, 2020 report. Um, and the reason we wanted to bring this up is our intent and our, our challenge is to, could be this one, has a little bit of yellow on it. Well, can you put it on, do we have it on, can we put it on the screen too? No, oh, we don't have it. No. Okay. So the, the, the challenge we've been has, having in the past, as you know, is there's been this um, challenge with matching up the reports with like the city manager's report. And because our report goes out at the beginning of the month, that data is presented to the utility advisory committee before it even goes into the city manager's report. Finance makes adjustments and then those numbers are different. So um, this is an example of where that happened. They, they had to make a, an adjustment for a retainage on a project. And the 1130 re report we presented earlier would not have matched the city manager's report because of this. So what I'm su suggesting going forward is that we're um, basically like for next, for the February meeting, we would be presenting the 12th the, through the end of December. And going forward, we would do it that way. So then, then, then those reports would be accurate. Is that pretty clear? Carol's better at communicating this than I am. So the city manager, the city manager's report is done this second in the second city council meeting. So at the presently, I put the CIP for the special projects fund is part of that city manager's report, and you can see how it ties back 
to the totals that the city manager's report has. And by us putting out the utility report prior to that city manager's report, then if they make any adjustments, it doesn't match. So this was a perfect example. This November report went out in December. The city manager's report for December hasn't even gone to council yet. It'll go on the 26th. So the November one is just going to the city manager's, the city manager's report for November is just going to council on the 12th. So they pull the totals for the city manager report and it shows adjustments that do not show on this report if I'm pulling it a few days after the month ends and they haven't done it yet. So in the future, this CIP report for utilities will be included along in the city manager's report, just like the CIP for report is done for capital improvement, or for, I'm sorry, for the special projects fund. So I, I can totally appreciate that. I guess the problem is, is, is that we are still trying to get data. And so if things are modified, for instance, so this one I can understand, you know, we haven't even, it might take a little time to get 12 done with everything going on. But for instance, we have the underground cable. I guess that's one thing we want to talk about. But for the electric, we have the underground cable of um, E2104, 75, $750,000. And I believe that was going to be, that money was going to be wrapped up into the other. So these are things, so this, this is the exact same one we saw on December 16th. So we don't have, hopefully we can discuss this, but we don't have new information to go over to try to improve our reports. Okay. The, the December report, that, um, adjust, that it went to council in December for the 750,000. So that's gonna be, that is on the December report. Okay, so, but, but we won't see that till February. <laughs> Well, it's the same thing as city council. The reports have to, so if you're meeting, literally our, if you're meeting today and you're trying to look at December, which today's the sixth, there's an accounting cycle also. So if something, it, it takes time to close out that month. And that's the same reason why the city council doesn't see the city manager's report on their first meeting of the month, they see it on the second meeting of the month. And it gives time, and this is a perfect example, when we're going to close out a project, and you go through and, and look at all the adjustments, and the retainage on that project had to be adjusted for, that's what this adjustment shows for November. So if this would have just been coming out in today's meeting, that and not have been given to you in December, the adjustment would have already been made. So I guess what we could do, um, Larry, is we could provide the UAC with that same information that's going to council for the second meeting of each month, and then you would have time to review it there and, and as well as discuss at the first meeting in February that we have. I guess if we put it as a draft, if we put it as a draft, then then it's understood that this is still not reviewed by by finance, and so do I, is that what you're saying? So we would, so in, we would get. Well, I, I understand you because by the time try to get it even get in the package, it, the the month's not even o over yet. By since we have ours the first, of the, and I understand that. Um, I just trying to figure out. I guess if there is new information and if this is updated, because a lot of times we've had it where it's like, okay, there's nothing really new. Well, we go three months or so with nothing new. We don't, we don't understand what's being completed. Right. So I guess the sooner we can understand what's completed, and I, the, the better off we are. Right. And, and I know what you're saying, because obviously that 750000 would not be showing up, right, because it's been removed and used for uh, Arizona Feeder Street. That the Feeder Street would be adjusted, and that number would go up, and that amount would be encumbered because it's in construction. Um, also coming up in the future, um, we've the BC tap to Buchanan has gone to council. It'll show up encumbered in probably in the next report. Um, 
and that's going to change these bottom numbers significantly um, in the encumbrances and the available budget. We just, because of the way the accounting and the timing happens, it's not here. So basically, Mr. Chairperson, is, is what I'm hearing is we're two months in arrears on our project burn rate for money. Okay, so we can be broke. We won't know for two months as the UAC. That's what I'm hearing. Because that's where we do our accounting. Okay, so for example... That's how we do the reporting. Right, so right. example on this report that was dated 1-6 of 21, 2021, we've taken 750000 and put it to the Arizona Street Feeder Project. Correct. So that should have been in this report. No. Or are we getting that report in February? Where they're going to move the money. That is going to be, that was done in December, mm -hmm. which that in today's the 6th of January. Correct. So that will go into the city manager's report. Correct. On the 26th of January. Correct. So, so that's when it'll, that'll be the December information. And basically the last part of January, first part of February. For something that happened, it'll be in there the last part of right. January for something that happened in December. Correct. So, like I said, it's a broad term, a two-month delay. Um, December, January, February. December to January is when that information will be right. presented to the council, which was is available to everyone. So, that's not a, to me, that's one, one month. You guys are working a four-day work week. I'm used to a five-day work week, okay, and some other things. So when we do budgetary analysis, if we've got a burn rate on a project, because I used to be a project manager, we have weekly reports that we used to put out for multi-million dollar projects. The problem is, is the UAC is trying to make sense of the budgetary funding for the utilities in Boulder City, but just for argument spitball, we're two months in arrears with what's going on. And that's all I'm trying to say. In other words, I understand what has to happen. It's a big city, a lot of moving parts and everything else. But we talked about the movement of the cable replacement money uh, last month. Okay, and we knew it was going to be done, but we still haven't seen it happen on the documents. So in other words, I'm doing all this stuff by pen and by scribe and trying to keep track of what's going on with the projects that are pending and everything else. Because what I'm... Mr. George Ree and myself, Greg Todd, have been asked to do is give you a five-year capital plan and an expense going out five years, and when things are moving around so fast, so I'm looking at stuff right now, and I'm going, okay, just for an example, I'm looking at Project uh, Electric 20-119, which is a UCP five-year plan, scheduled to go on 24, and we're going to do 4 kV substation removals, in 24, that was a proposal, but we haven't rebuilt substation five yet. So this thing is a, is a set of dominoes, a chess piece. We're moving all these parts around, but we're not looking at the overall picture. And pretty soon Marvis and all the guys in the electrical division are gonna go, we just killed a whole station. Where's the feeders for it to replace all the power? So that isn't scheduled till 2025. You know, so we, we're trying to give the city a decent working plan as to how to do all this stuff. And I know for exact rebuilding substations, you got to have something to refeed the circuits before you can tear the substation apart. Well, that's not on the plan. So, you know, tonight's meeting that we're going to have is we need to proceed with getting equipment started to be purchased for these projects because with all the hurricanes, ice storms and everything else going on in the Midwest and back East, we're going to be on the back burner to get equipment bought and purchased for our projects if we don't put the order in now. And so I'm trying to look at this thing as an ex-electrical mechanic slash project manager and say, okay, these things have to dovetail in to where this has got to be energized and running before we can shut this off. And we're, we as a city are not looking at that, this money and all these projects like that. And that's what's got me frustrated. I know Marvis needs some equipment and the material, and I know the utility needs the equipment and material, but all we've got is, like for example, uh, substation five transformer and foundation replacement. Okay, I understand that. 
But the problem with it is you only got two and a half million dollars budgeted for it. And with the project cost going up a million dollars on a $10 million project, there's no float in here. There's no extra funds. We're right down to the bare bone. If anything, if projects and money are going, uh, projects and material costs are going up 10 to 15% every month or every year, we'll say year just to be safe. Well, by the time we get to fiscal year 2024, we've gone one, two, three cycles. That's a 30% increase in material costs. We don't have that float in there. It's, it's solid. We need to start buying material for these projects now. And that's all I'm saying as an ex lineman and, and station rebuild guy. We do have to take and really work on this, and that's why the report for the five-year plan that Mr. George Ree and myself worked on, we can't give you any data because we're trying to hit a dog on set of ducks from a mile away with a dog on 22 rifle. I can't do it. It's impossible. So when we get told by the CIP project coordinator, and congratulations on your award, Thank you. uh, that, that we're trying to make this make sense, and we're only concentrate on one cycle. That's the electric system. We're not looking at the water, the sewer, or the landfill yet. Okay, we're having enough trouble getting the electrical system unscrewed. And just now, you guys threw out a project number. It's not on the sheet. Okay, where'd it go? It's not here. It's not on my sheet. I just went looking through everything I got. Where'd it go? On our sheets, it disappeared. In the city, they said they've already moved it into the Arizona Re Rebuild Project. Okay, well, gosh darn it, leave the line item here and say, Moved, funds transferred, and then put a lead on it says to project number da 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 da. I got no problem, then I can find it. But right now it's off the chart. What? $750,000. Off of this chart? Off of the charts we were handed last month. Okay, For we just, George and I just did the report on the fiscal year, was it 22? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was on there, and now it's gone. Okay, I apologize. The 750 that the council did in December right. is, is, has never left this report. The report that I handed you today and the report you had in November, that 750 number is there. Now, we did send you the staff report that indicated how that money was going to be allocated or reallocated. We did send you that. So that showed that what was going to happen. But I think, but the point is, I guess, that he brings up a really good point though. So is it gonna be removed or is it gonna be kept there and the money's just showing moved? Cause that, I guess that would help. He's got a really good point to leave it on the document so when we complete it and we show the end of the year, we can show what we started the year with and what we ended the year with. What'll happen is on the December report, I highlight that and I will move it down to a separate column on the bottom that says, because when even if we close it in Munis until the year end, which is the last day of June, it will it stays in Munis. It just shows a zero. There's no way. So when I pull my reports, I'm just going to move it out of the top because it's actually closed and it'll go to a column on the bottom that says closed in fiscal year 21. But that'll show on the December report. Right now, this is November, and nothing was done to that project in November. So this has to match what the report that comes out of Munis. Okay, I understand. I guess, so now we're, but I just want to make sure. You, you were stating there's a possibility we could see a draft, and are you not agreeing to that? That's what I'm trying to understand now. So Dennis, did you say we possibly could, could see a draft? Well, what I was suggesting is that you could see the what goes into the city manager's report as soon as the packet comes out, whatever the day is before the second meeting um, in the month, the city council meeting, and then at least you would have it, you know, almost halfway through the month, a little more than halfway. So and, you're saying you, you would, and you, you would, would have would, it. You uh, would send it to us so we don't have to go through the report. You would send it to yeah, us as a committee. To... You would just email it to us. Correct. Okay, that's why I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay, so you would email us the current. You would email it. You would have an opportunity to see it at least sooner than the February or the first meeting of the month each okay. month. I, I understand the timing, and I, I really do, Carol, to, 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 to see it. It's just, it is frustrating. And so Greg brought up some really good points, and we're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to figure it out and, and trying to get, you know, really, 
I, we don't really have enough information to put to finalize a report today. I don't really think we do. So we need to discuss that next too. So I guess, ha but so I appreciate that. But at the same time, we can't see, and that's the other thing too. I guess on here is that do I think we've talked about it, but maybe we didn't emphasize it. Can we get a, a column or something that shows percent completed or something to sort of give us a better idea of what's been completed so far? We can. We can do that as a percentage. We've done it too. I just want to make sure I understand the information you want. Is it a percentage in Munis? In other words, if we go with the, the report that I pull out of Munis, it has a percentage of completion, but that's not, that's what's been billed, that's what's been paid, that's the finance part of it. Are you looking for that or are you actually looking for a percentage of completion on each project based on physical work completed. Well, the, I think for us, really, the physical work completed is, is and you could ask the group to make okay. sure that I'm not the only one thinking it, because the, the money, if they go over it, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You know, so to me, that this report for, I pull it directly out of Munis, for transparency, that let, allows any time in the future or anywhere for somebody to go in and pull my same report. So that report is not going to be a report I pull out of Munis. That to me would be a separate report that the count, that you're requesting where we could actually put the projects down, go to each and, and say this is the percentage that's completed, physically completed on this project. But that's not going to be a report I'm going to pull out of Munis. Okay, that, that, I understand. And that, thank you for that information. That helps okay. us understand. And so the thing is, we're, we're not asked, we don't want you to do a lot of extra work, but there is mm -hmm. informa the information we do need to, to keep moving forward and to understand things. And I think that would help. So is that yeah. a report that could be done reasonable? Or what, what, what is the that, aspect it, of that? I would say that if you request that report, um, that's going to be a separate report a, away from here. Because like, like I said, this is a report that's pulled out of Munis for transparency. It, I don't change what comes on this report. I would do that as a separate report. So if you want to direct me to do that, I, I don't see why I couldn't do that. Working with Dennis and... Yeah, I think we, we essentially would just work with uh, Marvis and Mike and Public Works because they're the ones mostly managing those projects and, and do estimates on the percent of completion of that independent from Munis. Um, and, you know, they may be within 5 or 10%, but they should be close. To me, it just would be two different reports. Well, and that's fine. That's yeah. fine, because it, it's, it's better to be, to have something, I understand what you're talking about, and I think mm -hmm. that's what we're asking for also, is we want to be able to follow the document to document. Yeah. And so if you've got, if you added this and it didn't track with other documents, then that doesn't help any of us. Exactly. So that, I, I can appreciate that, and that, all that information is very helpful. Okay. So, yeah, I would, I would suggest, and so um, I guess we can go ahead, Greg. I've got one more quick one. On the report you have in your hand that we're talking mm -hmm. about, where do the project numbers come from? Because The I project can't... numbers are actually the Munis project numbers. And on the December report, I changed that first column to say Munis project. Okay, but it's not on this 8.5 by 11 that you gave us. So this is Munis project report. So then where's our conversion calendar from the Munis project report to the utility CIP report project number? Okay, so we are right now between public works, utilities, finance, are creating a new project code, which it, right now this isn't a one day project to redo this whole system in the middle of CIP and budget. Um, what we're working on is doing a new project code that will actually, what we want to do is make the Munis code and the CIP code the same. So it never changes. But realize, realize what, what that entails. Munis has a certain a number of digits and what we can put in there. So to work that so that we do one code. So if I assign that project in, and I use it so it works in Munis, understand that I do it the first year it hits the CIP, and let's say that project either gets taken off or it happens five years, it's, we're putting it on this year for five years out, that code cannot be used again in Munis. That code is, 
So we can make it work, but we have to make sure that we're one, we're not going to run out of numbers. One, we're not going to duplicate numbers. But I mean, you have 10,000 numbers to play with. How can that no, not be I, enough numbers? We don't. <laughs> well, you got four digits, right? That's 9,999. Correct, but we still have to we still have to go in and make sure that one we're not going to be duplicating. It, it can be done, but we have to make sure that we're not going to end up duplicating a past project or run into an issue in the future. So you're saying you've had 10,000 projects in the history of the electric? What I'm saying is that I we are going to go in and make sure that we get a fix to this, not a band-aid that we get a permanent fix that can be used for... Fair enough, yeah. My other question is, can we have access to this Munis thing? Because it's sort of a black box to us, and can we... Well, Socrata... What's that? Socrata... Well, whatever this is thing... Vid... Socrata is the website that the city put out, and that's where... That's... Socrata comes from Munis. And so, so... But, I mean, where you got this information, can, can we have access to that? That information to the public yes. is what Socrata pulls the information to. But you say you're using a thing called Munis, am I correct? Munis is our is our financial. That's our. Can system. we have access to that? Um, that would be something that the that the finance department. That's not something that that we give access. You seem a bit reluctant. Without training, it's not my. It wouldn't be my place to make that decision. Okay. Again, it's a question of trust. You know, it'd be nice to just see where you're pulling these numbers from. So, but have, if have you gone on the Socrata website? That's what the city invested last year in Socrata, which is public. Well, I can go on it now. Is public access and where? It, what's the what's the link then? I I don't have it memorized. Well, then we can we play can, these games yeah, all day long. No, no it's I'm not right a game. I'm I'm ready to do it. Okay, I what I. And I'm not trying to be confrontational. I'm saying that I this, doc this documentation comes out. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, Carol, please, yeah, but you have the right to walk away, so I, I apologize. Um, I, we, we don't want, so please, George, we, we don't need to be confrontational. It's not a confrontation. I'm it, just asking where the website is. Is that in, that's an inappropriate question? But would you admit it yourself? You're just being confrontational. Well, you can so, call it whatever you want. The well, public's entitled to know. Well, the public, we as the committee, we and the public, we have certain aspects that we do have a right to know. There's other things that the city that we don't have access to. Um, city software that they use. I don't but think I'm asking about the public information. She said there's a Soprado website. That hang, hang, hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. I, st I stepped out for a minute. The real quick solution to this problem is you have a project column that's Munis, and you have a project column that is internal to the city. Let's just put a second column on our sheet and just convert the numbers right there. Be done with it. Okay? All I'm trying to do is convert these descriptions to the account description and make sure everything matches. That's all I'm trying to do. Because the question and task at hand that we're talking about, we'll get back on track, is is there any projects in the electrical section, water section, or sewer section that we can push out? Okay? And until we get that done, we're just fighting ourselves, okay? I'm gonna take and recommend that the, can the committee go by the description that's on the utility CIP dated 22-26 and that's what we start talking by. Because the numbers don't make sense to anybody in this committee. It's internal to the city. And all I'm trying to do is go forward and move this committee forward because I want to get out of here. I agree. That's not a problem. But I think right now we do we do have one thing that we have two we have one report. We've asked we've been told that the best thing to do is we need a second report for some of the additional information. So also what we've done is is that um, so if we have a second column with numbers, it would probably be on the second report, not on the first report, because this is a this is a specific report that I'm assume is being done through a city uh, program that really isn't available. It's not public information. So the so the website is so that was the confusion we weren't able to get to, George, is that the public the the actual program is probably not accessible to this, us. Whereas the 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 um, website is and and well, I'm on the, we, I'm we on the website right we, now. Okay, well, good, good. But not everybody has it off the top of their head. Well, where is this thing on that website? That's what you said. You're displaying this 
on Socrata, if I understand correctly. Well, I can't see it. No, what she was saying is the data that is available to the public is, 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 is Socrata is the tool to get that. That doesn't mean that graph is on Socrata. Because but I don't see anything with CIP or projects or anything on Socrata. I mean, I can see sort of vague, but anyway, I don't want to disrupt all the time. I'm just, you know. Uh, but, but to, uh, and yes, Larry, that's correct. The, the financial management system, MUNIS, is not available to the no, public. That, okay, thank you. But is it available to us? That's my question. No, it's yeah. still, it, we're still part of the public. It's not something that, and that, if we're not careful, that is getting into, the, into their daily, daily routine. So we do have to be careful with that. Um, Eileen, did you have a comment earlier? Cause, so I guess I'm just going to go quickly around, really, since we're not voting we, in the workshop. Um, Martin, would you, be, would you agree that we'd want a second report to, to ask the city for a second report on the CIP to ask for? And then I guess then maybe we can either this time or see what it looks and maybe we can start doing it so we'd have something that shows the completion. Well, if the information that you're looking for can't be included in the one report, then yes, I guess we need a second report. Okay, Greg? I agree. We're going to need a second report. George? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Can you repeat that? Okay, so we, right now we've got, as, she, as Carol just stated, we have the one report that she can pull, and then for, <laughs> yes, and to get the second, to get some of the more information we're looking for, she would have to, re, to produce a second report. Sure. And she's asking us. Okay. So, Eileen? Yes, just to clarify, the second report, we want it to also show the percentage of completion, not budget, but... Uh, physical completion. Physical completion, okay. correct. Okay. Um, and so then on that one, maybe could we do it for right now? Would it be feasible to put a second column in to say, here's the, here's the units project, project or the, uh, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, and the, the project number, and here's, here's the, here's, here is another number if it exists. So if it exists under another number, then could we have a second column for that to also? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's, oh, that's only for the projects that have started, correct? So if it's a project that haven't started, it hasn't been given a MUNIS number yet. No, no. It's, it's, so you, you'd have a MUNIS column, and then you'd have a second column right. that said, here's another number, if it exists. Right. So then we could look okay. at it and say, okay, if somebody says a different number, we look over and say, okay, it's in that, it's the same, it's the same project. Okay. So, and some of them just may be blank, right? Then that's great. Yeah. That's fine. I don't have a problem. That shows us we don't have as much problem there. Until it, until the project is started and it goes into MUNIS, then it'll, then it'll have a MUNIS number in there next to the so I, I understand things take time so you guys are working on that so as, as soon as it can feasibly be possible we're going to try to get the numbers to line up we we do not assign a project in munis until we it's funded we can start the project so we assign a cip number when it hits the cip it doesn't get a munis number until that project is actually started in it at least going into design and funded and we don't give it a munis number because if it we haven't in the past because then if it never gets if it gets taken off or it never happens then you've got a muni a project sitting in munis that's not okay, yeah, going I, anywhere okay, i understand i think i think i'm sorry Go ahead. but what we're talking about in the future is actually assigning in the cip a number that can be used in Munis. But even then, it's not going to actually be put into Munis until the project starts. In other words, we don't fill up, we don't take the CIP and put five years worth of projects into Munis, into an, a finance program until the projects are actually funded and going. I'm sorry, is it Munis or Munis? Munis. Munis, okay. M-U-N-I-S. Thank you, thank you, that makes more sense. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so on this pro on this new report, I can have the Munis project column number, and then I'll have um, the AKA or the other number, which would be the CIP number. And then once it, so you'll see a difference is once the project is started and going, then you'll see a Munis number added. Now going hopefully into the future, when if we when we get it all worked out, then the MUNIS number and the CIP number going forward would be the same. Okay, and that's what we're trying to get, because right now, yeah. just so we clarify, what we have is, and this is one that's a little, actually one that's, that is very confusing, 
is that we have a Unis, Munis number of W, so for the water project, we mm -hmm. have a Unis number of W2103, which is the re reservoir improvements, which mm -hmm. is on the ongoing. And then on the spreadsheet, so we'll have to look at, we just got the information for the capital projects this morning, so we haven't, we'll have to go through that mm -hmm. more. Um, but from what I, I have off the, what we have so far is the SIP is W2, it's, excuse me, it's water, 21-101. So there's, you wouldn't even assume that they're the same project, and they are. Correct. And then the other thing is when you have an ongoing, we have several projects that are over more than one cycle or more than one year. So if you have money going into it each year, then we need to be able to say, okay, on the CIP, let's say a project started and then we fund it for more money and we skip a year. So you've got to be able to look, we need to be able to tie the CIP going forward to the existing project that we're going to fund additional money to. So that's where we want to make sure that the numbers coincide. So if we have it in, if we can do a numbering system where even when we go to to add additional funds to a project, we have to be able to make sure that it ties back to whichever, so that you guys can see it's all one project. So we do understand and we've identified that. But, but that's what the whole problem of Boulder City has been, okay? When a project dies because it's funded but not being done, the money just goes into space. It, it, Marty and everybody else, we've been dealing with this for four or five years, okay? We can't track it. So if you create a project number, whether it be the project by these numbers, electric, water, and this, or you create it in Munis, the, the inception of the project should start, continue with the year. So for example, right here, you know, we've got sewer and water and electric that are now 20 project number and 21 project numbers, but there were some other ones that were 18 and 19 project numbers. Mm -hmm. They should still be on this document because they're not closed out. There's, there's encumbrances and monies that are reserved to pay bills, but all of a sudden they've disappeared on every document I see. So okay. where'd they go? And that's what the problem has been BD, before Dennis. Okay, we've been fighting this thing for a long time, many, many years. And that's uh, something we're working on right now, is actually tracing back the projects and we'll be able to AKA every single project number. From cradle to grave. Okay, I can't, I, we can't promise that. I'm not promising that it's going to go back I think 50 years. <laughs> if, if you want, I can bring years. 10 years of documents, and I know Marty's got another no, 15 no. least, and I can bring them in, and we can go back through every project and find out where it went. Because, what, and because, I think we can do that, but what I don't know is that we can match up actual numbers because we changed the financial management systems and made other modifications. But, but that's fine, but there should be a a program or some piece of paper that shows us changing the document numbers from this to this to this to this to this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this has been Boulder City's problem all along. When it gets too hot, we get rid of our staff and we start over. Well, and I think the staff does a really good job when they send the staff reports to council and it shows those changes. I think the bigger challenge is if a project was just never done, you know, how was that communicated? It just fell off the CIP, right? And what you're suggesting is we need to wait. We need to know that happened because uh, an example I can give you is when I started, there was a five million dollar um, effluent line um, that was in the CIP. We took it off because there was no need for it. Uh, but I don't know how we would track that other than go back to the old CIP and know that we took it off. Well, I got one better for you right out here on Arizona Street. Power Electric has done work on Arizona Street from Wyoming on Arizona up to Nevada Way. They've removed the neutral conductor on several of the poles, changed the poles. The neutral conductor going across the street, Nevada Way, is being held up with a piece of silver lawn rope and a pork chop. Now, if that neutral falls on the conductor that's below it on the underbuild section, then we're going to have a good fireball out here on Nevada Way and Arizona Street. I brought it to the attention of some people, but they're, don't, they, don't, we're going to catch that later when we do the Arizona Street rebuild. That's not the right way to run an electrical system, because if a wind comes up 
or something happens to where that piece of rope becomes a bird's favorite nesting material, that neutral is going to fall down on that underbuilt conductor circuit and we're going to have a fireball on our hands. That's been like that 18 months, okay? And that's not the way we build electric systems with a ring and a prayer and a pork chop and a piece of rope. We've also got a guy wire down on Nevada Way in US Highway 93 that's wrapped around a pole. It's not taped, it's not banded, it's just wrapped around a pole and tucked back in. Don't know where it goes, but the problem is our system's falling apart faster than we can fix it. And we've got projects that have not been started but are still on document that still have money reserved and we're saying we can't do them. So the problem is when you take in a task the Utility Advisory Committee to forecast out a five-year CIP plan with the projects that we'll use the description of, well, I haven't seen the stuff in the past finished up and it's still hanging. So why are we gonna keep going forward? And that's what the recommendation is tonight. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, we started at one, not two, but we've got time to discuss it, but I'm recommending as the author of this document that we wrote, the five-year CIP, that I push some things out along with Mr. George Ree and the rest of the committee. And when we get ready to talk about it, we'll talk about it because I see stuff coming to a head. We're not gonna be able to complete the task in the next four years, not unless we get a lot more bodies out here. Mm -hmm. I had one comment just to get back. So this Socrates system, in a more conciliatory note, maybe it might be useful if you could come and demo it for us and say, well, here's how it works and here's how we can reconcile these numbers with these numbers because I can't right now. So that would be useful. Is that, that's not too confrontational, is it? Going to be a question for the finance department. Yeah. That's their program. Which department are you in then? I'm She's public, public works. Oh, okay. All right, well. But we can find out. Yeah, I mean, so you can kind of make sense of what's available to the public with what we're getting from you. Okay, well, let's put that on. To, if, if you want to put it as an agenda item, we can talk about it in the act, in the regular meeting as far as an agenda item for future. And I don't know, George, that Socrata gets into a project by project. No, it doesn't. That's I think it's more of um, totals. Okay, well, okay, well, I, we can see if other members think it's worth doing or not. Okay. I've got a question real quick. Is munis or a, or a component of munis not Mr. used Mike, in the budgeting on. process? Oh, I'm sorry. Mike's off. Yeah, it's on, it's on now. Is, the, is, uh, is there a, pro, uh, a component of munis that's used for budgeting, like to go out for the, for the four or five years and to assign these project numbers to? If it's, it's out to say two years. That again is going to be a finance question. Okay. As far as what the module is capable to do in the end. Okay. Because you don't know what they use to do the budget, huh? I know that there's yeah, a budget manager. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a really good question for the budget manager. Okay. And in her numerous workshops she has scheduled right now. And um, as far as assigning the numbers, that is something that when the project goes into Munis, the numbers are assigned at that time. So what we're talking, they don't, like I said, we don't go in and put five years worth of CIP in the first year because the CIP is a moving, is a moving document. So to put something into your finance program that could change four times before the fifth year, that's why you only approve and the council, or the council only approves one year at a time. Okay, well I was just thinking like the, yeah. for the projects that it would be in 22, mm -hmm. which would the, what they're working on now. That's not gonna go in until the projects are actually started. Okay. So for an example, all the projects that were approved in the 21 CIP, mm -hmm. they're, they're in the utility as the projects are in there, but we haven't moved on them. In, in certain instance, let's say if in 22 it gets approved and then somewhere down the line it gets changed or moved or then that's when the adjustment will be made and I'll make it to, t to 21. Then I would go in and make it and we'll de we've just 
said that we will designate on each monthly report what's changed from the last report. And that's why I brought this report back because the first one I gave you in December changed for November. So moving forward, if something that was put in there off of the 21 CIP that has not been started, which is several of our projects, then if that project changes, it will reflect in that monthly report after when, the, when it actually changes and we change it in Munis. Okay, I think I understand. Okay, we're, I guess we're not going to put, the best thing to say is that we put them in the CIP for utilities on an annual basis because that's all that's what's been approved is annually. As far as when we're asking the council to do it, they're approving the, t the CIP for budget year. for one year. Okay. So, clear as mud. <laughs> well, I think what we're Thanks. just, if, if we can try to clarify is that what we're trying to do is make sure anything that exists in the ongoing now that has a specific number and is going into the 22 or the five-year plan, we see if we can link those numbers. That's what's really confusing because if those numbers are different, and I think that's what a lot of people were saying is that how are you tracking that? You've got two separate numbers now and how are you tracking the full numbers? And that's what looks like has happened in the past too is you've got two, maybe even more numbers for a project. And so when some things got dropped or we don't understand. so. I don't think we need to go back 50 years, but we do need to decide whether we go back five years, whether it's 10 years or whatever, or do something. And that's sort of a parallel aspect of what we need to do. But the numbers right now, though, I think, just the one I was telling you about, the W2103 is an ongoing. And then we've got a new SIP where the SIP number is, a, is water 21-101. It's, it's an existing, it's one that already exists, and it's also being put into the SIP program. So those would be would like to be fixed because that is it is already in the municipal, it already has a, a munis number. And so that's what we're really concerned with because we don't want two separate numbers to be tracked and then and then something money get lost and misunderstood. So that's what we're trying to try. That's I think that's what we really want to work with now. So the other thing I'd like to to clarify is that so on a second on a second report, what would be, we would want the Eunice number, we would want a second number, we need the account description, um, the original budget information. So I guess what would you, what would you think would be a good, good way to put the second report together so we can just, we can try to be online. It might take us two, two indications, but if we're both sort of on the same page, the committee and you, then um, it might be helpful for the first go around. So what do you recommend? I would recommend beginning with op this open projects. In other words, these projects right here. Starting with the, the column which will have the Munis number because that would be open projects that are in Munis already. Okay. Then I can add a second column and I can try to go back and research and find out where it'd be two different things. If there was um, a past CIP number, which on a project that's been funded more than one year, it could have, in the past, it could have different CIP numbers depending on how the CIP was done that year. Okay. Um, but I would also look at the project you're talking about in water. I would make sure that that column showed the CIP number in the current CIP plan. Okay. Um, so I guess I would go back to the beginning. That's why I want to start on these open projects and go because those I can actually go back to the beginning of the project and say, okay, this is when it was first approved and this is where we funded. So this is any, num any project number it may have showed up anywhere on as That'd far as the CIP right. number. Um, and then have a column where Dennis actually asks each project, each person actually responsible for that project, what the percentage is of completion, mm -hmm. physical completion on that project. Correct. Does the group think, would it be advantageous and be hard to have physical and budget? Do we want both of that? Would that be a problem? 
It might not hurt to show both. I, I personally can calculate out the burn rate of money real quick. I don't need that. I just need to know how much of the physical project is complete. And the other thing is, what does the term MUNIS stand for? Um, I know that's the name of our software. I would have to go actually into Tyler Connections and see what they what that stands for. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> it's not uh, something I, I'm... I used to remember it six years ago because we had the same system where I used to work. So I'm just trying to remember what the total acronym is. <laughs> now it's going gonna, to gonna make me go look right when I'm out on the well, it was, it, I'm going to go with municipal information system. but that, That's what I think it was, but there was another tag on the back side of it. Yeah, but it's MUNIS. And, and what used to take, and so everybody understands, anybody that uses an acronym or abbreviation needs to explain it the first time so everybody knows what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> because that used to be one thing we got graded on when we do interviews. Anytime you use an acronym or an abbreviation, you better spell it out, otherwise you get points off. Yeah, the government and the public has a tendency to get a little carried away with acronyms. So, uh -huh. But yeah, okay. So I'm sorry. Anyway, you were so. What was so? The rest of what would you in, think would be ready for the second report? The information or columns you would need. Okay. The mu The first column is going to be the munis number. Correct. The second one is going to be any other AKA number, okay, which great. I'm going to look for any CIP number that could have been related to that. Okay. Um, one will be the description. Okay. Great. And. Um, the other one will be the percentage of physical completion. Okay, I think probably the budget year would probably be handy too, because then we can see when it was budgeted and how much was completed. So, it, so what you have on the third column right now, you have original budget fiscal year in. Mm -hmm. I guess in, I don't know, is that is it actually the fiscal year end it was budgeted, or should it just be fiscal year? No, fiscal year end, because we don't. I put. So that would have been fiscal year end 2019. That would have been from June of 18 to to the end of 19. Okay, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, yeah, I'm still trying, trying to cover the different ways we do this. Okay, so I think that would be helpful. And then the completion. And so for that report, was there any? I'm sorry. Let's finish writing. Okay, so I have five columns. Okay, does the anybody... The number, the AKA, any other project number I can find, the description. Oh, I'm sorry, the original budget year, or it, that'll be the inception okay. of the project. The description and the per physical percentage of completion. Okay. And this gets produced... On what basis? Like once a month or once a year or what? I'm, you're directing this. <laughs> it's hmm. not something, um, just keep in mind that when you're choosing, make it feasible that we can actually meet with every single person that's on every project to get that percentage and to get it. So I, I wouldn't say it should be on demand. I think we need to have notice so that I can get with the people to get the information updated. Greg? Why don't we sync it with the two-month cycle that we're talking about reports coming in and out? So they get two months, you know, to take and change this and update it, and that gives them some breathing room. I don't have a problem with the two-month cycle. That would work fine for me. That's six reports a year. That's, is that feasible? I think that's feasible, and, I, and I would say monthly is probably too much because they don't change that quick, especially if they're in design and haven't even started construction. So, so if it, I guess what I'm a little confused about is you're saying there's a two-month cycle, so I'm doing the utility month, the CIP for utility, and giving it to the council once a month. So are you saying that this report would be every other time I give it to the council? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the problem we're having with, and you've identified it by the column listing, mm -hmm. and if you look at the column listing and you try to take and go through this, okay, and, and it's getting very difficult because as we change the name, we, we don't change the name, but we change the ID number. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff we're talking about tonight, I've gone through everything I've got, and there's quite a bit in this folder, 
and some of the projects and stuff and some of the project numbers I can't find anymore that disappeared. And and that's something that, that exactly that we're, we're going to now fix. That we're working on. But my question is, is when you say every two months, I I guess I need to know when's the first one and then is it going to be I'm skipping a month and doing the next one or well we'll we'll get with Dennis on that. But okay. we're, we're running against a time constraint right now with our quote, workshop versus our formal meeting, okay. which our formal meeting starts at three, I think it is, on the agenda. Yeah, really quickly, just so we can finish it up. So is there a possibility we could, it, would February's meeting be too early to give us a draft? Because it'd be helpful to have it in February, and then we, then we decide from there. And, at, and you at, can tell at, us. A, at a minimum, I would think we could get a, a draft out um, so at least we're comfortable with the columns and what's in there. And I, I can't promise that it's going to be perfect. Uh, and, and we'll probably put draft all over it. But um, I think we can do that for the first. And then we can go every month after that. Yeah, then, then we can talk about that. Then you guys will have a better idea of what's going on with the report. And, and then after. So if we can have it by February, the next meeting, then it would be helpful. And we can go from there. And we can use the first report to make any modifications or changes or additions or subtractions or whatever. Good. Lee, do you have a comment? Yes, in our previous meetings, we had um, there had been some requests, one to show whether a project was being done in-house or by contract. So is that something that could be on that? Yes. That, yeah, that would be great. Thank and you. Then, it's um, on my list. I think you had another question about showing how much of a budget was design and how much was... Uh, actual construction yeah I'd said that um, so let's uh, yeah basically really quickly the reason that was more or less I think actually g goes with the future SIP so for instance some of the projects were saying five hundred thousand dollars in one year and then the major amount of money the next year and I was assuming that was designed so that I'm not sure that fits into that product but it could be I guess if, it, if we know that that is just a design then to know if it's completed or not. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I don't know that it's down to that level of accuracy when we're doing the, the budget um, for the CIP. The total includes the design, but how we broke it up was just a guess. Okay, well, that's one um, we can talk about next, so we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get that in. So anything else, Eileen? So no, that's going to be yeah. six columns now, right? Yes. So I'm going to add that column? Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then if you, if you and Dennis think of something else, then we're okay with that too. So are you going to have the uh, dollar amounts in that one, or? I don't know if we, do we need the dollar amount since we already have this, because we're saying we'll have two reports. We'll have this with the has a dollar amount, we'll have that one that's it's showing us the completion. So, it, I, do you think we need it? Unless we showed the dollar amount that had been, well, that's, but that's the percentage of change. Well, and you also want to tie it. When we're doing, our main thing is to make sure that the reports tie together. And th what's happened in the past is by me handing you one and then not waiting for another report to be done. That's what I'm, we need to get on the, the same cycle. So my only concern with putting that on is then we need to coordinate this report and we can to be done based on that same day that I'm doing the other, the CIP report. So, because then those numbers need to tie back to something. So just every time we do a new report and we put new dollars on it, right. I have to be able to, to tie that back to everything. No, I, I, that's what we want. So we want that's it. my only hesitation. It's, I would, if we do that, we just need to know that we, we need to define up front exactly how often and what report I'm tying it to. That's why I'd kind of like to do this one based a little more on the information we're talking about and use the second report that I'm providing every month for the, the actual numbers. But it's up to you guys what, if you I, want those. I, I can live with that. If, no, I agree. And I agree. if we, you know, maybe someday we can get there, Eileen. I think I'd prefer to keep them separate as well. Um, and basically call this one what it's called, and we, we can basically call this one a project uh, progress report. That's, yeah, or stat, uh, you know, that, an actual prog status report, project report. Okay, Greg. And, and we can sync them to whatever your schedule is, 
you know, you're the driver because you're going to be the creator of it. But please make it an old man print, 11 by 17. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to put that in big letters. Yeah, old man print, because because that way I can doodle on it, I can write on it, and that way we can make notes. And okay. I I would really appreciate that. And I Eileen, I love what you're saying and what you're thinking. But if we keep them separate, we got more room to write on. <laughs> So I, I figure that the first one that we do in February, I expect changes. We can go on it and, and change it. So I think that's what Dennis is saying is the first one we're going to present it and then we can tweak what. No, that's great. So, that's so great. we're going to give her a first, first, her first grade from the Utility Advisory Committee. Well, and, and I'm already sensing, at least in my own mind, that, that as we build on this second report, we could even have a small description of progress depending on how much progress is made. I will bring my magnifying glass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. Appreciate it. And yeah, again, and congratulations on your award. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm not sure we're going to close this one out because we're still, I think we'll still be linked to it, but we definitely want to open up the next um, item. And Greg, did you want to go with it or do you want me to? to I'll, I'll take this one and give your voice a rest. What we're talking about is the utility capital infrastructure project for fiscal year 22 through 26. Uh, last meeting we talked about in the meeting before, we're going to go by the electric 20-103 number. And we moved the Red Mountain distribution line rebuild from fiscal year 2025 over back to 2022. Mm -hmm. So that should be on the report. On electric 20-105 substation three rebuild, a critical precursor to that is the San Felipe feeder project. So we go down to the San Felipe feeder project, which is E electric 20-108 and we're showing it going to be occurring in fiscal year 2022 and a carryover to 2023. So what I need to know is what's the status on the San Felipe Mendota feeder project? Has there been any activity? Come on up here, young man. I know you got an answer for me. It is uh, currently under design right now. Uh, through Public Works Engineering, and uh, they're getting ready to start surveying here in the next few weeks. So. so, so we're anticipating probably by the middle of this calendar year, we should have some movement on that. Yes, sir. Hopefully, by the next couple months, we should have some kind of groundbreaking movement on that. So, yeah. I tentatively recommend that we push the major portion of the money. And we flip these two numbers, 100,000 for design in FY22 and 1.4 million in FY23. Can so if we close that out in FY23 and we get it built and energized, you get your million cable in there. Hope we get some extra conduit in there too. Uh, then that means on 24, FY24, we can start substation three rebuild. That is correct. So substation three B rebuild has to push out to 2425. This is the problem I'm having with flow of projects. Okay, you and I are used to be in the trenches together in different projects, but I can't see us taking substation three apart and rebuilding it when we don't have the San Felipe Mendota feeder in there to back feed the customers we have coming off of sub three. Uh, so my good, Yeah, a good portion of that. Um it's probably about half of it. So, yeah, we do need to have the Mendota complete, but that does not hold, hold us hostage to uh, do sub three. Well, but if sub three was to go down in its entirety, could we pick up the load out of sub five up the, San, the Mendota San Felipe feeder? No, we cannot. Okay, so I know we got <clears throat> sub six underbuilt from sub six to sub three. Right. But once we strip all that stuff out of the out of the station, we've got no underground feeders. We're going to be building shoe fly lines all over the place. Well, we actually, we actually, to make that correct, 63 also is in design, which it's almost, it, we're probably about 75% complete with 63. The uh, final portion is from sub three up 
uh, Wyoming to uh, Cuyahoga, I believe that is. And that underground has to be done. And outside of that, then we'd be done with 63 as well. So we'd have 63 and 65 to pick up the majority of substation three. So that's what I'm saying. 53 is not gonna hold us hostage, but it would be good to have. So we, in the projects that we're working on, the 53 and 63 are the completed ones that we need to get done to go ahead and uh, be able to disassemble substation three. What's 53 and 63? 53 and 63, yes. What, what is that? That's, I don't see it on the project here. Oh, there are two I'm different confused. there are two different projects. Uh, 53, which is the Mendota, uh, San Felipe. It's, it's Circuit 53, I apologize. Okay. But on on your paper, it is um, Mendota, San Felipe. And well, that, would, that would be a Project 108. But you also have a feeder 53 replacement. Is that the same which, thing? Yes. It's, 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 uh, Mendota, uh, San Felipe is a continuation of uh, 53. Okay, 53 so was... A good portion of 53 was already completed. That's going across the, across the existing golf course uh, down from Substation 5 uh, Buchanan across the golf course to Georgia San Felipe. Okay, uh, so Georgia Mendoza, excuse me. Right sheet, you, you probably don't have these memorized, but our sheet, we're showing it as E1902, and it says feeder 53 replacement. Right. Okay, so and yes. then so then we're, then we have, if I'm hearing you correctly, then are you talking about Circuit 63 or feeder 63 is your next circuit one. and feeder are the same thing. Okay, so so, yeah. so now you have we have circuit 63 64 tie as E2103. So again, probably you don't have it memorized, but is that but you have circuit 63 and 64 tie. And that's a different no, that's awesome. completely different. That's that okay, so that's why we're trying to make sure right. we're so 63 correctly. 64 tie is completely different from the uh, circuit 63 uh, should be I don't know the number on that one though. No, I understand. Because Mendoza feeder is E2101, is the San Felipe. Right. And so is there two or is there more on this current ongoing? Four. Four to get, because to get, you're saying 53 and 63. So is, is the San Felipe then the 63 feeder? No, that, that's 53. That's part of San Felipe. Mendoza is a part of the 53 rebuild. Oh, I'm sorry. So on actually, I'm sorry, E1901 right above 53 is feeder 63 to substation three tie. Yes. And that one, so, okay, so. Mr. Mr. Chairperson, I want to interrupt. What document are we working off of? Because I specifically said utility CIP 22 through 26. I don't see any of those numbers on this document. Okay, so what well, I actually, I should, I pulled it off the one I could read, but it should be on the ongoing. So, um, that's what that's what we're because to get what we need to be done if i'm understanding correctly we need to interact so this is the if you look at the ongoing sheet it should be the same thing so the, the sheet that we were talking about just a minute ago with the yellow highlights those numbers should be what i'm talking about interacting with the five-year plan because we have to work with the ongoing so what am i missing greg okay We've, we've been working on a utility CIP 20 through to 26 for the last three meetings. So now we're going to use a current document that we just got handed to today to do this tracking. This is what we've been using for the last three meetings. So now I'm going to convert this over to the document you're using because none of the project numbers match. Okay, no, 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 no. We're, we're, and I don't have a current one of that one handy, unfortunately. But we're using, my understanding, we have to use both. You, you do, not, because 22 through 26 doesn't include these. Correct. So right now, the feeder 63 and feeder 53 sh are, shouldn't even be on that document because they need to be complete. We're hoping they're going to be completed. So it might see what I'm, my misunderstanding something, George, Greg? They're on document. They're on both documents is circuit 63, which is another project that has to be done, and that's the cross connect for the lift station backup down at the bottom of Hemingway Valley. No, that's what we're just that's what we're just trying to confirm. We're, there are two, there's two 63s or three, three possibly, but they're separate. Yes. Because we have a feeder, so the feeder 63 is only on the ongoing projects, and then we have a circuit 63 that's on the five year document. Correct. And so my understanding is the only way we can do this is to utilize both documents. And that's the reason we needed both, both information for this meeting. We have to go what's ongoing. And, but as you stated before, the plan, a plan needs to be done. And a plan, if we had a draft plan, would be very helpful to understand how it flows. So unfortunately, so now we have about, 
we have a little more than a half an hour, not much more, to try to figure out how we want to do work with the report um, and to try to figure out how we want to lay it out. And what we're showing is there's a lot of confusion. Well, that's what we said in the report. That's what it says. And, and I think that confusion is because of those, those projects that are needed to make 22 through 26 work aren't described in 22 through 26, right? Because they're independent of that, because they've already been approved and are already part of the FY21. Well, the uh, San Felipe line. Mendota feeder is on the CIP for 22 through 26. Okay, it's in 22 and 23. Okay, so that's what I'm working off of. The 6364 tie, which is a cross connect for the lift station back up down the bottom of Hemingway Valley, is on FY22. Okay, on the 23 to 26 CIP. Okay. So most of all this stuff is here. The problem I'm having is we're putting the cart before the horse and we're on a wing and a prayer. If we take and we start, we break ground on demo and out sub three in summer, and we wind up getting a spike in utility or power consumption, you know, we're gonna put all resources to bear on what we've got existing, which is gonna be a feeder, underbuild feeder out of sub six, which is already on the new tie. Okay, that can come into sub three and take the load. If we can get the San Felipe Mendota feeder completed by the time we take out quote unquote sub three, which is design and FY22 construction in 23, okay, you're talking those two feeders coming off of six and five, sub six and sub five carrying for 18 months. Yes. Okay, and you better make sure we don't have any other, any more connected load because Sub five needs to be rebuilt and new transformers installed in order to carry the load. So as a, as a, just a utility advisory committee, I'd advise we sit down and we look at some calendars and we figure out when this is gonna be kilt, when it's gonna be rebuilt and then recommissioned. And we start looking at this from a utility standpoint because mm -hmm. I know that nobody in Boulder City wants to be without electricity, <laughs> especially in the summertime. And there's gonna be the phone ringing off the hook. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to make sure we get it all done. And when we do demo out three and rebuild it, and I think electrical construction guys love room and real estate to bring lifts in and bucket trucks and everything, that we cut the top of that hill off a little bit bigger. So right. we got room to move around. So, and I, I think I'm hearing your concern. Your concern is, you know, I think we've got the prioritization pretty well laid out. It's whether we can get them done and synchronized given the resources we have. So maybe, um, Chairman, what we should do is, Marvis and I could sit down with, with Mr. Todd, um, kind of work through that, and if we, I think we can make some decisions whether we need to push some stuff out or whether we're comfortable. Because even if I am able to get additional resources, whether that's um, consultants or additional in-house help, there's no guarantee even then that we can accomplish um, what we need to accomplish in, you know, the outgoing years, including FY22. Yeah, and she says we're just now starting moving on FY21. Yeah, and what's scaring me the most is the equipment lead times. Right. Okay, and then a realistic plan for transformers and what we're going to purchase. Because I'd rather go big than go small. Right. If I can get 50% load on a can and have some extra to carry a sub or anything like that, another sub or another feeder that we need, I'm all for it. Correct. And, yeah. and uh, I just looked up on the computer, there's a really good uh, a boilerplate software for ordering substation transformers. It's nice. I looked at it. It's got forced air one, forced air two, oil feed. It's got everything in the nomenclature to where we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And... Uh, I recommend that we look not at so much future growth, but if a transformer is going to be here 10 years and you get 3% growth a year, that's our max, we can do simple math and figure out what we're going to need and have a little float. Right. But my biggest thing is, is like we were talking at the last meeting, I want to make absolutely certain as a, re as a retired electrical mechanic slash lineman substation construction foreman that we get everything to where we got a little extra gif, a little extra if in it just like we talked about on our cables, our feeder cables, you know, you don't go 100% at 12 kV. 
you standardize to 15 kV and go 130, 140%, 150% even, because the insulation's better and you have a longer life. It doesn't cost as much to put it in new than it does to tear it out when it goes out. Correct. So, and the other thing I'm looking at that I reiterated before at the meeting, and it's getting real quick, but some of the stuff we're doing, we're not completing the tasks. Okay, so it shouldn't be his job to go around and check and make sure the contractor's done with their job. They're supposed to have a project foreman on the job looking at what they're doing. And nothing scares me worse than seeing a dog on a piece of copper wire on a pork chop, which is just under tension held by a piece of rope, half inch silver lawn rope, sitting up there and you can just see it fraying in the wind and the birds are picking at it for nesting material. Where's that again? Right outside uh, over there on uh, Arizona and Nevada Way. Right outside the, uh, the Boulder, bigger. Boulder, yeah, coffee cup and all the other places. It's going up Arizona, and the reason it was done like that is they said we're going to get a contract for the Arizona project, go underground with it, and all that stuff's going to go away because that's where you need the two steel poles to go across Nevada Way. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, I'm aware yeah. of what's going on, and I can see it, but every year it sits up there, it just makes me more and more nervous because I can see it dropping on that 12 kV primary under build, and all of a sudden we got a ball of fire on our hands. Well, as a sidebar, that project is underway right now. So yeah, that Arizona, yeah. Uh, Arizona yeah, so, project. So, so that we're going to get be it, remedied real quick, hopefully. Yeah. So, yes. So, like I said, stuff like that makes me nervous. But, yeah, we're doing good. And like you said, Dennis, I appreciate getting in and sitting down, looking at a calendar and going, okay, we'll take and we'll figure this sub three being recommissioned by this date and time, give it 30 days of float, and then, okay, we can go down to the next one. But the problem is I feel this this five-year plan is too aggressive right now based upon COVID and some other stuff going on. So we need to address this, look at it, and probably push some of the projects out. But Mr. Poole was actually disagreeing with you because your point was we needed to do San Felipe first and then substation three, but he's saying no. And so why are you disagreeing with Greg's point of view then? Well, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with him in that sense, but I'm, what I'm saying, sub uh, 53 Mendota, uh, San Felipe, won't be a complete showstopper because we do have some uh, other avenues that we are pursuing also that need to be done, which is the Circuit 63, which on uh, my sheet I'm looking at is, uh, Larry, if you would, is uh, 1901. Yes. That's the uh, tie. Yes, the that's right. Yeah, right. Yep. So, and again, that too has already been designed and we have to do a little, uh, little cleanup on that and then that too is going out. So those projects are already um, so in, that in serves that, San, that area that San, the San Felipe feeder was supposed to serve. A portion of, of it, port backs, it backs it up to a different substation. A portion 63. of 63, right. A portion of uh, substation 3 will go to substation 5, which we're talking, which uh, Mr. Todd is talking about, uh, the circuit 63, which is the San Felipe Mendota. But the other portion of the substation will go to substation 6, which we have two circuits there already almost complete. So... And if we had to do some existential switching, we could. But I mean, ideally, we'd like to have them both done. And so you're saying you have two different feeders going to that San Felipe yes. area, two backup feeders. So no, it's we're going we're to have two feeders going to the old substation three, which is at the end of Adams, where where the new Boulder City tie, 69 kV tie comes into, and the Boulder City tap comes into, and it's the one, another hub, another key hub of Boulder City's power system. And so when you take out an old station like that, is that a feed-through station, yes. three? So when we're talking a feed-through station, that means the 269 kV lines basically come into the station and go in and out. Whereas the new technology and design is you tap the 69 kV and use a, what they call a load interrupting disconnect to take and switch the one station in and out. You don't ever bring your lines back in and out of the station to where somebody can interrupt that power and basically take out another section. The point is he's saying it doesn't matter if sub three fails before the San Felipe line is completed, and you're saying it no, does. No, 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 he didn't no, say that. No, no, no. He said we don't want to take and have sub three taken out for a rebuild until we've got a backup circuit. But not necessarily 53, maybe a different one. Is that what you're saying? 63 Correct. would be the one. 63 okay. and 65, yes. Okay, okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So and then those should be done first. Right, and that's what... Well, they're, they're all working in concert. Yeah. So like I said, 65, for the, 65 is there already. We have some underground work to do right outside the substation. Okay. And into the substation. Uh, 63 and 53, 
we still need some construction done on those, which are currently being done right now. And, and the first number usually, Marvis, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first number is the station number. Yes. Okay, and then the second number is the circuit number out of the station. Correct. So when he starts talking 6-3, that's station 6, circuit 3. 5-3 is station 5, circuit 3. Correct. So, so that's the language we use in the utility industry, but to the layperson, to city council, it's Greek. But it's better to have, it's better to have two than one, okay? There, there are some other companies that do for profit. Their attitude is if the power goes off on your house, to heck with it, we don't get any money. But as a municipal utility, we have a fiduciary responsibility to keep the power flowing within the city of Boulder City limits. And that is what a municipal utility system works rather than a for-profit system. And that's what I've always lived by and that's been my credo. So it's great to have a backup because it gives you an, a little bit of extra comfort, but, but it's not the end of the world. But the thing is 63 is purring pretty good. I haven't heard any problems other than cable down in the residential areas. So if we push it a year or even six months, it's not the end of the world, but we have to look at the thing as a whole and make sure that we're not like we had before. We had Red Mountain Line, the station being tore out, and we didn't look at Red Mountain Line to be refed. So this is the things we've got to look at as the Utility Advisory Committee. We're here just to advise whether you take the advice or not. Mm. It's not our purview, but I'm just looking at stuff and I'm going, we're getting ourselves into a bind because we're trying to complete so many open projects and then start all these new ones. And we don't have an overall view of what we're trying to accomplish by 2026. And that's actually, I think, leads into just what you said, leads into the problem we have with the current, the current report that's attached to the, to the, to the um, package. So I greatly appreciate Greg, Greg and George, your, your effort and everything that we did to this. But we have several issues with the report. And I think if you brought up properly, we, don't, we really don't have enough information to complete this report to really say that this is what we want to print out, put, put out. And there's, we need to have, so we've got about, we, can we push this till, till 255? Why? I have to finalize this deck. It's going to take us eight minutes. Okay, so we have until 2.50. Yeah, that'd be good. 2.50 will work. Okay, so we have, we have a little bit, just have it more than 20 minutes to discuss some of the issues, but I don't think we have time to clean this report up to be able to vote on this report no. for today. I, I recommend we, we push this off until February and get it cleaned up before we vote on it. And we're not talking about voting right now, but when we go into our next meeting, which is a formal meeting, yeah, I recommend that we, because of the workshop and what we've been able to discover so far, we delay the vote on this CIP, five-year CIP report until February. First. Yeah, what I'd like to do is discuss some of the issues that, that have been brought out in the report and some of the things that can clean up the report and then figure out if this is, a, if this is the format we want to use or if we want to do a little different for February. But I'd agree that it's better. I think we'll have more data and be better in February. You like it, George? Well, yes and no. I mean, we're supposed to report on these things once a year. Now we're, you know, one and a half years into the process. I see once we've delayed, you know, we could delay another month, I suppose. But I, I don't see any harm in telling the council we don't have enough information. and. You know, unless you think we will have enough information to complete it in a month, then well, I guess. Well, the, the thing I'm saying is a year is between January and December. Okay, I'm looking at the calendar date, not the months. But based upon what we've discovered at the workshop, the documents we're working off of are, are, are no bueno. They're just not good. I mean, we can't design a report or put a report out if we're talking about moving projects out. Okay, and... and that kind of stuff. So I recommend that we defer the the voting of the report at our formal meeting until we get together and we make a realistic plan of how these projects are going to all dovetail in together. But I mean, the calendar year was from January 20 to December 20. We were supposed to comment on the five-year CIP, and we, didn't. we 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 got the report in for what the council is voting on 
and that's we need some more breathing room because we get a report out on the five-year plan and it is wrong they're going to come get us no i mean it's their responsibility i think it's worth telling them we, you know we don't have enough because when will we when do you think we'll have enough information in five years or you know well well based on i think the conversation we had we, we could have it ready for the next meeting right so uh, george we know this I mean, most of the stuff we're doing is fiscal year, not calendar year. So it's from June to June. Right. So we're the fit, the, and especially the five year plan is definitely on fiscal year basis. So we're talking about reviewing the 22 to 26 fiscal year five year review, which is from Ju July 1st, 2020 to June 30 of Ju 2021. So we're, we're only halfway through the year. We're not, it's not a calendar year, it's a fiscal year. No, I'm just saying once a year, whatever year you want to call it, we're supposed to review these things, and it can be fiscal year. But if the committee wants to, I just think at some point we should get something to the council. Saying, we, we, I, I, if I don't go to the other side or whatever, I guarantee you that I can have it done by February's meeting. Uh, I, I think you and I and Marvis can sit down and knock this out pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, and, and, and I think we're going to, I think, if what I'm hearing is the, the, the biggest issue is the concern about how, how, you know, how do you get them all done within the time frame that we're showing. I think and, we, we and, can work that out. And also what's outstanding right now on projects right. that are pending. Okay, right. and, so, and, and, and that's what I envision in the, re, in the, in yeah. the report is a discussion on the ongoing. And right. then here's what we need to modify in the 20 through the 26 to make this work. And, and the electrical seems to be the biggest headache right mm -hmm. now. I don't feel the water's a problem, I don't feel the sewer's a problem, and I don't feel any pending projects in FY22 through 26 on the landfill is gonna be a problem. Because they're gonna to have to take, like you and I have talked about, road improvements and fencing. Okay, and then the possibility of opening up another cell. Right. So, so that's something we can put in and amend the projects. We've got a tentative on, on the landfill, sewer, water, and electrics pending. So I said three out of four, I don't think we're doing too bad. But, so a, but we need to make sure that we get our projects lined up into the right fiscal year for the money and anything we gotta delay or push out because we don't have all our ducks in a row yet, we can do that. And, and that's then, gonna be, that's more meaningful to the council to understand what actually can be done. Right, this, and th there is a little more flexibility in the water or sewer and obviously with the landfill. Yeah. Right. But, but I'm saying we can give them a decent report, we can mm -hmm. workshop it on in February, we can come back with a draft, and then we have our formal meeting like we're going to have at 3 o'clock today. We can then vote on it. Right, right. so we'd have, to, we'd have a double meeting again in February, a workshop Correct. and a yeah, regular meeting. I agree meeting. with that. Yep. Uh, Marty, are you okay with that? Eileen? Okay. So what I'd like to do, because we can continue on somewhat into the regular meeting, when we get back into it, we can talk a little bit more about the capital. But what I saw is I'd like to go over some of the, the things that were brought up in the, in the report and also things that might help the report, if that's okay. And that's what we can discuss. Was there anything else, George, you had? Okay. So the two th big things that I saw um, was the, uh, was, was, was pointed out as the two major issues was the uh, one and two on the first page of the report. Um, I don't know if we want to bring it up or just go over it in, in minor detail. Let me just start it and then see if everybody, everybody wants to. I think we've, we've answered some of the questions. I think some of the projects answer some of the questions. So the first one, I think it's broken down and, and either one tell me if, there's, if you want to elaborate on it. But basically, as you guys just talked about, Dennis, that you're going to put some type of, re of start a draft plan or something showing how we think things can be t done. And so I think that is the major issue for number one. Is that correct, George and Greg? Okay, so then the number two issue, I think there was a lot of confusion there, and I think we can clean most of that up, if not all of it up now, is that it is confusing in that the way that the funding for capital is done and in, in, in where it comes from, how it's part of the rate or not, or something like that. And so I think some of this, the, um, the voted on issue and then the track numbers was confusing whether that had already been sold, whether the money's there, whether or not. And so I think right now, if I'm understanding correctly, SIP in this document that was turned in, um, so uh, on this document here, 
part of the SIP that we have. Mm -hmm. It says SIP 3 and 4, I think it is. Yeah. It talks about the voting issues. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about track uh, 349. And do I understand correctly that 349, the money has been collected? 349, I believe, has. 350 is the one that has not. Okay, but so we have the money in the bank for 349. For 349. Yeah, and I'll verify that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Okay. So there's two yeah. issues with that one, I think. Just let me go through the two issues really quick. The two issues is, first off, my understanding is is that money helps offset the capital, but it, the capital is not rely. You're not going to, it doesn't rely, the project doesn't not rely on that money. You, you can still do that project that, if that money was not. You, if you took those resources out of the, out of the, basically out of the financial plan, there would be limited impact, minimal impact, because they're, they're minor compared to the requirement, the, the revenue requirement for all the capital projects. Okay, so that's one thing we might want to get squared away in the future. We don't have a whole lot of time right now, but I think, and so the thing, Greg, but the thing is, is trying to figure out, make sure we're all understanding where the funds are coming from and, and what the project is, the, if the project's dependent upon any specific funding, because I think that's what yeah. number two was concerned yeah, with. We, we showed them in a, a certain um, project, but it, you know, if they, if they don't um, come to fruition, it's not going to uh, cause any major problems. Okay, that's where I saw that. So, Greg? Just real quick, uh, track number uh, 349 is Boulder Hills Estates, not Boulder Golf Course Project, and 350 is the property and track well, around I mean, the golf course. Right. So 350 is not sold, but 349 is sold, and they're getting ready, I think, to vote on phase three on the next like, council meeting. That sounds correct. So um, does that, do we need to discuss number two a little bit more? Does that give you a good starting point? Okay. Um, so then going through that then, um, so to the bottom, they're saying that there's too much, there's still much information that still needed before the, and I believe it's only 12 projects we're working with instead of 13. Is that correct for the five-year plan? But I, anyway, if we can just check confirm that. that, okay. I in that. And um, so. I have 13 on the document. On which document? CIP 22 through 26. Okay, I guess I can't count, so I'll, I'll work with you on it later then to make sure I'm, what, I miss, what I must have missed. Okay, so... Um, they forgot Project 104 on one document, so it skips 103 to 105. Is 104 still going to be done? I have to get my decoder ring out and figure out what it is. Okay. It's the overhead line insulator, 4K overhead line insulator transformer and arms replacement. Yeah, and that got uh, moved and consolidated into another project. Is that the 40, no, let's see. It's 119, true. I think, is what it got co consolidated into. Hmm. Yeah, I guess there is a... a I, is it done, maybe? Because it said it was, it's not done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You said 109 was the loop? Yeah, one, E1, yeah, the, on the ongoing, it's E1909. E yeah, 909, yeah. Yes, so 1909. So what's the status on that? That... Okay, so that that would be, and that continues on. So that needs to be added then back into, um, that needs to be added then, right? Yeah, back into the utility CIP yeah. docket. Okay. Because that's an ongoing project. But on the last meeting we talked about, there's a 4 to 12 KV cutover, which is project E20-119, which has been dovetailed into uh 1.5 million in FY 2024. So that's some of the other stuff. And then the one project that was added uh, that we discussed was the uh, pole replacement that was uh, electric 21-101, which converts into 
E21105. So that's some of the problem and confusion I'm having. So that's where we got to get it straightened out. Okay. So I guess the big question is, do we, is the, the definitions, I, I think I, what you're trying to do is put the definitions into layman's terms. And so that's helpful. So we would want, we would want the definitions for the electrical and we need, we need all the rest of the definitions for water and electric. So does the committee agree that we want all the definitions for the five-year plan included in the report? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Descriptions or definite descriptions equal definitions or because I'm looking at this one here on the Boulder City Utility Funds Capital Project year to date, dated 11-30-2020. The pole replacement program is listed as E2105, and over here the pole replacement is listed E21-101. Okay, well let's let's go into that detail right now. This because we're really short on time. Right now, what I'm trying to get. A, so if we go to the second page of the report, where there, I believe. Let me see if there's definitions it's described. Which way it's described? At. Um, I mean like circuits and feeders and things like that, what, what we mean by those things or? No, it's, it's what's defined. It just, let's see, the project's numbers keep changing. Let's see, the project numbers for the five-year plan. Let's see, I, I guess it's, we, you, have listed, you have listed the projects and you've, you've described them. So I'm not sure if that's the descriptions or definitions. So in the report, you have um, copper service line replacement and you describe that. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and this is what the problem was that George and I were having. Uh, copper water line replacements is listed as W2006 on the Minus, Minus report. And over here, copper water line replacement service is 2106. Right, so what I would suggest for right now, because we're not going to get it fixed, is that we put it W2006 slash water we can, we can do that. Okay, we I can agree. do that. We can clean it up. And the other thing, too, can you please... Um, make the changes that we made from the report um, that we gave to the, that was sent to the city council for the 22 and include that. So there, the report that we did and voted on that had the SIP 22 that we sent to council. That was already submitted to them. Uh, Joshua forwarded it on to city council and I think Dennis also showed it being forwarded on to city council. Right, but these definitions or descriptions are what are from that document and they, the corrections haven't been made here. We had we made corrections in the in the meeting, and those corrections aren't on here. We will unscramble this. Like I said, this is a workshop. We'll get it all fixed up by the first meeting we have in February. But as long as we agree that we're going by the description and the account description, and then we will take and put slash. Okay, and which would you prefer, the muni number first slash the electric number, or what do you That's want? That's what I would say. Yeah, let's do the muni number first. Okay, so we, yeah, we can do that. Okay. All right. Um, so I think, so the other thing too was, is that, so by then, do we think we'll have the tentative, is it a brochure, is it a report? Um, it's, so the reports that are usually report, or the brochure that's put out with the um, meetings for the budgetary meetings and the SIP meetings, it's, it's the thing that has the executive summary and yeah. then the yeah. listing of all that. Um, yeah, it's, it's usually a tentative. Um, it's tentative, and that hasn't. Even, I don't believe that's been developed. Right, right. But th would that would that be done by February, probably? Okay, so we're, they're doing uh, a meeting uh, I on. I would think so. Tomorrow is it? Is the meeting for tomorrow still going? What yes. what document are they using for tomorrow's meeting? They're just doing. Carol's doing a presentation. Um, correct. that I gave to the council on December 1st. Okay, because what I'm talking about, I guess there's, is it, you know, these, these reports that usually go out? Yeah, that yeah. goes out during the budget cycle, which they haven't even started. They're, yeah, they're just starting. No, no, these, <laughs> this was done in November of 2019. So this was started, so we have a couple of these. We have, so. Yeah, this that's it, that was, that was tentative. And this year, he'll they'll do those during the budget cycle. That one was just done very early last year. Okay. Those were the final on that one is dated like May. The final so, is, but yeah, we're, we're asking to review this before May. So I just if the more data we have, it's just it's just handy. It's it's confusing okay. because again, we're not consistent. 
documents aren't consistent. I, I've been trying to ask, I, I've been trying to back into when we have to have things done. Mm -hmm. Trying to understand when meetings are going to be have, when you need, when the data from this committee is needed. And that's what I need to understand. There, we're asking the council to do a tentative approval of the CIP at their December 26th meeting. Okay, I mean the or January. January. Uh, I'm sorry. Now, is that for the, is that is that for the five year or is that for the twenty? Is that for the twenty two? It's it's the twenty two that they do the tentative. Okay, and so we've given for. a report. We've given a mm -hmm. report to them. We've done a final. We did a a a, yeah. a uh, voted on it. So now we're trying to do a five year plan. So we have, and our goal is to get it as a reasonable time frame, and we're hoping we can do it in in February. So, okay, it just would, I was just trying to understand and trying to use similar documents that we had last time to help. So most of the data that is in that project is in here, but not 100% of it. So we're just trying to follow through better. Um, did, okay, so. Okay, so did anybody, Eileen, did you have any other comments? report that um, I just had a question on the copper service line replacement um, why are we using copper and not PVC because <laughs> copper in this environment is more durable last longer uh, less leaks um, we've had challenges and not just us everybody in the Las Vegas Valley um, has had issues with the, uh, the poly pipe that's gone in historically and PVC so it's just a better product in the environment. Okay. Where I was just concerned that the hard water here would be harder on copper than PVC. Um, there's specs that, it, it, and I don't know all the details on that, but there's, uh, if you don't get the correct ASTM standard um, copper piping, there can be issues. And I think it has something to do with the amount of zinc that's in the copper. And that has happened in the past, but it's not anything you know, it's now something that's specified. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we've got one thing, because if, if we have to do a comment period at the end of this time, we don't have the time, so um, just need to do one, thing, one more thing. But that, that's one of the reasons I asked for the change of what we modified, because we modified that to say these old polyurethane, I think actually it was your example, lines that are feeding water, so that helps you understand, I would hope, the copper, because it's the polyurethane that's being changed back to copper. Doesn't it's a, a big to differ. It's not being changed back. It's being replaced. Okay, sorry. Okay, the poly pipe is rotted. It's brittle. It blows holes in it. My neighborhood is famous for it, and uh, it tends to make a big mess. It also craters the asphalt pavement, and uh, copper is a lot more forgiving when you get a hold of it with a backhoe. Yeah, what I meant by replace, I thought it was originally copper, but yeah, we don't have time to. <laughs> so thanks. Um, okay, so I guess uh, quick. Quickly, we will, so we're going to close down the agenda items because we don't have any more time. And we will open it up for a very quick comment period. Again, we will also have a comment period at the beginning of the regular meeting, so it would probably be better to, to do that then. But if somebody does have a quick comment, we'll be happy to take it. I'll go ahead and wait till 2.50 and then we will cut it off if we don't get any comments. Yes, uh, committee members, good afternoon. Fred Bolts for the record. The reallocation of the $750,000 discussed earlier brings up a continuing issue of money being shifted around from project to project without accountability and tracking. Once again, unused project money from canceled, completed, or under budget projects needs to be placed into a pot of money for reallocation, not directly shifted to another existing project where there is no easy traceability back to the origins of the initial appropriation. What Socrata Software offers to the public 
is a list of payments made only. It offers no munis utility project number associated with its checkbook entries or totals for a project, nor does it offer the general ledger account the transaction is posted to for financials. It offers no insight into the four digits the CIP coordinator claims are potentially available to append to the absent munis project assigned number so we can have one unified project number. One question that wasn't asked or answered by the CIP coordinator and which needs an answer is if these four digits haven't been used in the past by the city, why would there be any potential duplication of one of the 9,999 potential project number suffixes proposed to be added? At a December 23rd meeting, the utility director committed to show which closed or never done projects originally on the list of capital projects in September 2019, but summarily dropped without explanation, are currently active in a new form, and how much budget money has been brought forward. The committee should look forward to that work product at next month's meeting. At the same meeting, the finance director and her budget manager committed to separate capital project money from separated from operating money for the utility department. Presently, the two are combined in the unrestricted cash line item of CAFER reporting with zero accountability or clarity as to how much money is available to spend or appropriate on utility capital projects. The utility bill, bill payments are not split between operating and capital accounts when they're posted. And I would ask that these comments be added to the record verbatim. Thank you. Thank you. And due to time restrictions, I, we will now adjourn the workshop and reopen the regular meeting at 3 o'clock or 3.01 or 3.02, depending on if we can get the tape shut down properly. Thank you very much for your time.